Hi, I'm Vicky and I'm a copywriter. In case you can't tell, I'm reading out what I'm about to tell you. Trust me, it is better for all of us. I'll just ramble and waffle otherwise. Right, I've got good news. It's really easy to write really good copy. Shirley Polikoff once said, copywriting is a direct conversation with the consumer. So if you only remember one thing from me, please make it this. Copywriting is a conversation. We all have conversations all day, every day, in person, on calls, on email, on social. And when we have conversations, we say real words that real people really say. So if copywriting is a conversation, we just write how people talk. It doesn't get much easier than that. David Ogilvy said, if you're trying to persuade people to do something or buy something, it seems to me you should use their language, the language they use every day, the language in which they think. I'm not sure how David Ogilvy would feel being mentioned in the same sentence as Ed Sheeran, but he writes how people think and talk too. He's one of the world's best-selling music artists and all his songs are made up of words people would really say. I wish I could sing, but I can't. And I wish I knew how to play a song in this video, but I don't. So I'm going to read out some of the lyrics to Ed Sheeran's Castle on the Hill, which could be a bit cringy, so maybe go and listen to it after. OK, here we go. 15 years old and smoking hand-rolled cigarettes, running from the law through the backfields and getting drunk with my friends. Had my first kiss on a Friday night. I don't reckon I did it right, but I was younger then. Take me back to when we found weekend jobs. When we got paid, we'd buy cheap spirits and drink them straight. Me and my friends have not thrown up in so long. Oh, how we've grown. But I can't wait to go home. I'm on my way, driving at 90 down those country lanes, and I miss the way you make me feel. It's real. We watch the sunset over the castle on the hill. With apologies to Ed Sheeran. Um, there are no uncomfortable or unnatural words in there. It's all very natural, very comfortable and very easy. Because it's all real words that real people really say. It's all words people would say in conversation. So copywriting is a conversation. This is the first lesson in copywriting. It's the first thing to remember when we write anything. And it's the one thing we do naturally. That is what makes it so easy. So how do we do it? The key principles that I write by are get real, get personal and get active. Get real is all about everyday language, the language your, your audience uses every day and the words real people really say. To make copy always get real, I swap words for contractions. If you think about how people talk, they don't really use full and formal words and phrases like we were taught to write at school. It's all a bit more relaxed and more conversational. So contract words like you will to you'll and do not to don't and so on. You'll get a discount sounds easier and more conversational than you will get a discount, which sounds a little threatening. And don't miss out sounds more natural than do not miss out, which sounds cold and formal. When people read words like you will and do not, they can stumble because they make a sentence longer and clunkier. So contractions just make everything feel more comfortable and a bit easier. Word swaps help too. When you write, read your copy back and check a real person would really say what you've said. For example, in marketing, we're great at using words people would never really say. We say view a lot, like in a call to action, view more. But no one really says they view more or that they're viewing the football or they viewed a film. They say see more and they're watching the football or they saw a film. Receive is another word people don't really say in conversation. People never really ask, did you receive my email or letter or gift? They ask, did you get it? Did you get my email? There are loads of words you can swap for real words people would really say. Swap utilise for use, purchase for buy, complimentary for free, inquire for ask, however for but, ensure for make sure. The list goes on and includes phrases too, like in order to could just be to and you will be able to could just be you can. So that's my get real principle. My next principle is get personal. This is writing in the first person, because copywriting is a conversation, which means we're always talking to a person, so we should always make it feel like we're talking one-to-one. -one. For example, if you're writing for Adidas and you're in an Adidas world, like their website, you don't need to keep saying Adidas, say we. And when you're talking to your customer, don't say the customer, say you. I avoid calling a customer a customer, and no one needs reminding that they're seen as a vehicle for a transaction. Steve Harrison says, there's one simple word that you should use a lot. Read your copy and check that you appears three times more than I or we. Lots of brands get personal and talk directly to their customer from the start. 
They use the first person in their brand promises, their slogans. L'Oreal says, because you're worth it. Red Bull says, it gives you wings. The National Lottery says, it could be you. And m and say, melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Getting personal like this, putting you in your copy, puts your audience right in the heart of your message. It makes people feel like you're talking directly and only to them. If you use the third person and only talk about them, why should they take any notice? That was get personal. Now for get active. This is writing in the active voice. And this is when it starts to feel like an English lesson, but I'm not an English teacher, so I'll try to make it as simple as possible. The active voice means the subject is doing the acting, and the passive voice means the subject is being acted upon. Let me try to make that make more sense. The active voice would say, Amy watches TV. The passive voice would say, the TV is watched by Amy. So the active voice that says Amy watches TV makes you feel like you can go and watch TV with Amy. She's doing it right now and you can join in. The passive voice that says the TV is watched by Amy sounds like the thing's already happened. Amy has watched TV and now she's done so you can't join in or get involved. Another push for the benefits of using the active voice is that it can give copy more bounce and energy so it helps the reader get through each sentence easily. The passive voice can make copy longer and it can feel cold and dry and formal. So those are my three key principles to getting the basics right in copywriting. Get real, to write naturally and conversationally. Get personal, to write in the first person. And get active, to write in the active voice. Those principles are really the basics. What we need now is to push them. We need to write in a way that really captures our audience's imagination and pulls at the heartstrings and the purse strings. We need to write copy that's so interesting our audience will want to read or listen to everything we write. And we need to write copy that's so engaging they'll be compelled to think, feel or do something as a result. Interesting and engaging doesn't just mean what you say, it means how you say it too. So I have three more principles that I write by. Make words work, make words count and make words dance. First, let's look at making our words work. This is where we write with impact. We give every word a job to do. If we fill our copy with emotion, our audience will feel something, and if they feel something, they might do something like buy or click or share or whatever it is you want them to do. Glenn Fisher says, people rarely buy features. People sometimes buy benefits. People always buy emotions. So really get inside the story you're telling. Find the emotion, the thing that will hit the audience in the heart. It's usually something they can relate to, so you must know your stuff and write openly and honestly. Next is make your words count. This is about using meaningful words, not wasting space with irrelevant words like adjectives that become wallpaper when we use too many too often. They just lose all meaning and audiences see right through them. Also, anyone can say their product is amazing or their offer is incredible, so how does a brand own a message? They make their words count by using facts. Facts are much more compelling and believable than adjectives, and they're more interesting. Adjectives aren't interesting. So at Sky, for example, instead of saying amazing movies and brilliant comedy, they say award-winning movies and original comedy, because both those things are true. They're facts. And that makes what we say more interesting and more believable, which makes our words count. Finally, let's look at making our words dance. This is the bit where we add rhythm and pace to make copy energetic and memorable, and we get active, which I talked about earlier. The best way for me to tell you how to make your words dance is to read someone else's words. This is by writer and author Gary Provist. He writes, This sentence has five words. Here are five more words. Five word sentences are fine, but several together become monotonous. Listen to what is happening. The writing is getting boring. The sound of it drones. It's like a stuck record. The ear demands some variety. Now listen. I vary the sentence length, then I create music. Music. The writing sings. It has a pleasant rhythm, a lilt, a harmony. I use short sentences. And I use sentences of medium length. And sometimes, when I am certain the reader is rested, I will engage him with a sentence of considerable length. A sentence that burns with energy and builds with all the impetus of a crescendo, the roll of the drums, the crash of the cymbal, sounds that say, listen to this, it is important. You should have this saved on your computer if not printed out and kept by your desk. It's called This Sentence Has Five Words. Google it and you'll find it. It'll guide you when you're writing. It'll help you know when to pause, when to stop and when to keep going. 
There are loads of techniques to help make your words dance. Swap commas for full stops for a punchy sentence or statement. Rhyme so words dance in the reader's mind and become memorable. Alliterate so words roll off the tongue when they're read. Repeat words or statements, but make sure it's for effect, not because you forgot you already said something. The power of three is another technique for making your words dance. Writers, not just copywriters, use it because it helps shorten sentences or thoughts for a powerful impact. Julius Caesar said, he came, he saw, he conquered. The French national motto is liberty, equality, fraternity. And back in the world of copywriting, Kellogg's Rice Krispies slogan is snap, crackle, pop. McDonald's says, I'm loving it. Nike says, just do it. Tesco says, every little helps. Adidas says, impossible is nothing. And KFC says, finger licking good. Although not at the moment as we're all being encouraged to keep our hands clean. So those are my three key principles for pushing your copywriting. Make your words work to get people to think, feel and do. Make your words count to use facts, not meaningless adjectives. And make your words dance to add rhythm and pace. I hope all this has been of some help. Do contact me if you'd like to learn more. I can send you lots of articles and book recommendations. But for now, thank you very much for watching.